Hey, D and Deers, we are um, sitting in the uh, dining room, so we'll probably have ambient noise in the background. We apologize for that. We're going to uh, do a recording about weapon types, general data, and to hit adjustments on page 38 of the Advanced Dungeons and Dragons Player's Handbook. First thing first, obviously I got my son with me today because he inspired this whole discussion. Right, Mason? Uh, yeah. Okay, so let's talk about what happened. There we go. Talk about what happened. Okay, so... The microphone's there. Can't turn that way. <laughs> <laughs> no one will hear what All you're right. going to say. All right, so, go I remember uh, looking at Advanced D&D, uh, never playing it, or not, not really. Uh, so I just remember looking at it, and I thought it looked interesting. And uh, I think it was yesterday, we were uh, playing, two, two days, days ago, ago, we were playing a game of White Box. And then I saw an uh, advanced D&D book, and I decided it would be a fun thing to play. Because it has different combat. And, and what did you look at? That all of a sudden it was like, what in the heck is this? So I looked at the like combat table for all the different weapons. Page 38. Of course, I can't put it all on the screen at once because it's so huge. But it's got like a jillion weapons on it. Not a jillion, but a lot. And it's got a whole lot of data. He asked me. Go ahead, ask me. What are you doing with this? <laughs> It's like, I, I said, after playing White Box, you look at this, you're like, ah, uh, it's a long story. We actually, when we played it, we barely used it. And then you wanted to use it. You said, can we use this? I just want to see what it's like. And I was like, all right. So I actually kind of had to sit down and digest the information because we never used it because it was just big and cumbersome. So we're going to break it down for you. All right. So it's, it's actually going to be truncated into three different parts. Okay. Section one, section two, and section three. I'll do section one. You'll do section two because you were all into section two. You loved section two. And then I'll finish up with section three, which is the easiest part. So section one will be on me. We don't want to make this video too long for those that are like, how we get. So this is just, this isn't the whole table. I just cut out parts of it just to use for comparison. All right. That's a comparative thing, right? So the section one is about weight, length, space, and speed of a weapon. So a pike, and honestly, we've never used a pike in any of our games. I guess if you're out in the open, it's like one of those giant sticks or something. Um, it gives you the weight of each one of the objects, all right? So a pike is just 80 gold pieces, and there's supposed to be 10 gold pieces per pound. So you're saying eight pounds is this very, very long stick, okay? Or seven and a half pounds is a battle axe. So this is, I, I know it's kind of weird, but that's the way it's set up, right? The length of this pike is 18 feet, so obviously it should be used out in the open. And I, and it says space required. Now, I, I know it's not 10 feet, because it doesn't make any sense, because the next one it says battle axe, 4 feet. Or is that 40 foot? This is where they, D&D, Iran's D&D, they used to mix up the measuring system, so which was really confusing for people that were trying to figure out what's going on. So obviously they mean 1 foot, because you have a 1 foot square, the pike's just poking things, right? It's a giant long stick. Where a battle axe, you got to swing, you probably need about four feet of space. Now, the cool thing was the speed factor. And I explained to Mason, what's the rule really when I'm playing D&D? Ties always go to the, to the party. And if you're one of these people that are going to split hairs and say the attacks happen simultaneous, that's cool. What determines what weapon hits first has to do with the speed factor of the weapon. That's that last column. Now, look at something like a foot, a bare foot or a soft boot or a hard boot. Um, they're the same, which is sort of funny, because the speed factor is like three, okay? Or let's take a dagger, which is small, you just jank something. I got a fork, the same idea, right? Compared to the two-handed weapon. So someone's taking a big swing with a two-handed weapon, the guy with the dagger is going to hit first. That might happen in really, really important in the last little constraints of the game where somebody's either going to die or live on the next strike. You say, well, the dagger's got to hit first because it's small, right? So that's kind of what the first section of the table is for. All right, Mason. Now you're going to talk about this mess, and you got a bunch of examples here. Go ahead. Okay, so this is the second table, and it's all about how weapons can hit easier against certain armor classes, or how sometimes it's more difficult to hit certain armor with certain weapons. So you first want to talk about the armor class. Now, if you're not into OSR or don't understand it, it's descending armor class. So go ahead and talk about this first. No one understands what's going on. All right, so the numbers... Okay, it starts at 10 if you're wearing no armor. And then all the numbers start to go down, which lowers the chance of being hit. So, with like 
with two for a level one fighter, it's about a 20% chance to hit an armor class of two. So it's, yeah, so you could only roll a 19 or a 20. So this, people had a hard time with descending armor class. Not anymore, I mean, I think the newer people, but the concept behind it makes sense. People make fun of it, but it makes sense. There's a 50-50 chance you're going to hit somebody unarmed. Once they get a shield, there's only a 50, uh, actually it's a 45% chance, because now he can block a little bit. And you did a good job explaining that, down to 20%. So now we're going to flip this thing up, and you're going to explain what's going on. So you're taking the armor class rating, and then you're putting the names next to this part. So this will be kind of interesting. And you do the dagger first, right? Okay. Um, all right. So depending on the armor, I guess, okay, I guess we'll just go through the example. <laughs> so let's say it's an armor class of two. So it's plate mail and a shield. If you're a first level fighter, it's 18 to hit it. But if you're trying to hit them with a dagger, it wouldn't work. Well, it wouldn't be very effective, so it's a yeah, minus three. Giant plates of metal. Chang, chang. I guess you got to get in the grooves, like right there in the armpit. <laughs> so it would be, you'd have to get a 21 to hit. Yeah. But if they're wearing no armor, it'd be very easy to stab someone. So it's a plus three to hit with a dagger, which makes it only seven. And, it, and I think it also the quickness factor is kind of in there. Yeah, I think Gary Gygax, when he slapped all this together, he's a genius. I mean, if you might say, oh, it didn't make any sense. and. I think he kind of looked at stuff as like the probability of being hit with a small one-on-one -on -one would be kind of easy, right? So let's look at the two-handed weapon down here. Go ahead. Do that guy. So with the sword, or with the two-handed sword, it's it's pretty effective at hitting through most armor. And, but it's mostly effective against leather, I guess, because it cuts through it. Mm -hmm. But... Yeah, and it makes sense. A two-handed sword would be a lot more effective than a dagger. Yeah, except for when you are unarmed. I guess they can dodge it easier because it's a big weapon, but a dagger small enough like you're getting in a fight, you can be quicker with it. But that would be a slower weapon. Does that make sense? I don't know. It's kind of cool, right? Here's the last one. You want to explain this? Because I kind of took some of yours. Go ahead. Explain the okay, medium explain large. And so, don't ask me why they did this. I still don't know. Oh, no, no, I did tell you. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. So basically, depending on the weapon, or depending on the monster, the weapon could do more damage. So if it's something small or medium, so like something normal, it'll do a normal amount of damage. So for the two-handed sword, it'll do 1d10. But if it's something big, like a dragon, it'll do uh, 3d6. So why? Why does it do 3d6? What was my explanation? And I think I made it up because actually I don't know the reason why. So I think you're able to hit, you'd be able to hit more of the monster to do more damage. Yeah, it's got more surface area. That was my thinking. I mean, leave comments on whether or not we just made that up. But I started thinking, like, if you had a giant, let's say, a large owlbear, and you have, like, a, you know, a two-handed sword, I mean, there's a lot of room to hit it, right? Where if you had something like a sprite, that might be actually kind of hard to hear. Oh. And I think it makes sense, like, from a gameplay standpoint, because stuff bigger is usually a lot more dangerous. So if you could do more damage, it doesn't make it, like, too difficult. You know what's funny? Was the, I thought it was cool. It's the Bastard ver Sword versus the Broad Sword. you got to look across the table to understand all this. So you have Bastard, Broad, and a Long Sword, right? And... Look how the long sword does. I guess this is more of a poking damage. And you can see it a whole lot when you go up to this one. And we're almost at the end of this talk anyways. But when you go up to this guy, right? Like, Broad's, a bastard sword is much heavier than all those swords combined. Right? It's Therefore, it's going to be slower. Okay? And so when it's slower, it should be what? Um, how would you say uh, a little different when it comes to to hitting. Let's, say, let's just look at this table running across. So I'm going to blow this one up. So look at the broadsword. So it's um, bastard sword, zero, zero, and then it's all ones. So if you, you hit, you connect, right? But a broadsword, at the armor class of like plate mail and shield, or plate mail, right? Uh, or this is like scale mail, whatever. It's not as effective because it's it's thinner blade, right? It's not a bigger blade. It's not heavier. So that's kind of interesting because if you get a bastard sword at these other armor classes, even though it's heavier, right, it's six, it, it does a lot more uh, damage. 
when you think, or an easier chance of hitting like the, the bigger armor classes. So hopefully it's clearing up the table. You think we did a good job? You think we did a bad job? I don't think know. It's good. I think it's good. It's understandable. Maybe. No, if somebody's playing, if someone's playing the old, uh, I found this GIF, so I thought it was pretty cool. GIF, I how you say it. But, but I, I think it's kind of an interesting game. What was your experience playing Advanced D&D? You played it, essentially I think we played five hours the other day. Which was, so what was your feeling on it? And it was actually an Advanced Adventures module we found because um, I didn't have an Advanced D&D module on me. And we ran it, and it was, what did you think? It was good. I, I like the combat because there's a lot more factors. There's a speed, like there's a damage against small and large things, and then like piercing armor and stuff. So when you're choosing weapon, it's a bit more to think about. And then in combat, you might actually want to switch weapons. You might add some more tactics. What was the other thing too? Was like we had picked up a half ogre guy that was over seven feet tall. So now he became a giant. And then when he went to go fight against someone. That had a 200 sword. The guy was doing massive amounts of damage. We almost thought we were going to lose this guy room version because he was bigger. So it was like sort of, it changed the thinking a little bit. And then again, it's the first time you've ever seen padded armor. There's like so many different types of armor. That's another weird thing about Advanced D&D is that the armors is so interesting. Let's go down to the armor classes here. Look at this list. Oh, too far. Look at this list. So you had a whole bunch of different options. And he asked me, like, what was, didn't you ask me it was scale mail or something like that? And I said, well, let's look it up. Padded. Padded. We, we were sitting there looking this all up, which was kind of interesting because he pulled it out of medieval armor. And so if you didn't, never seen something like that, or even banded armor, split mail, looking at it, it's like pieces of wood down the front of it or something like that. So it was kind of fun. We had a good time. And it was just one of those things where we kind of learned something along the way. And I don't know. I mean, right now, it sounds like fun. But... Like I said, unless everybody's in on it, it'd be very confusing for most people. You have to sit there and understand it, which was kind of cool. Yeah. All right. With that, hopefully you found this interesting. Leave comments, okay? Leave comments if you want to see more of Mason giving explanations because he's an inquisitive lad. And with that, you guys have a fantastic day. Game on.